Okay, we're working on the fuel tank today, trying to get that all together. I will show you what I've done so far. This is the new tank that I bought from Moss. Um, here's your where your filler neck is. That's where your um, gas sender goes for the gas for the fuel level. And this is a hole I drilled in it for this in tank fuel pump. So this is a Phytech. The part number is F0017. And what's unique about this is it has its own return line, which is the black one on here. Um, it's totally internally regulated by this thing right here. It's a four bar regulator, which translates to 58 PSI. You can kind of see it right there. Um, so a pretty neat setup. I've already, I already pre-measured and drilled this thing. Um, and I'll show you what the inside of this tank looks like if you ever plan on buying one. This is just a standard Moss, excuse me, Moss tank um, without the vent kit. Let me turn my work light on here. What was really interesting is, let's see if I get some light on here. So if you look at that, that rod coming down to the right is a return line. And then there's a little swirl pot in there for fuel. Um, and then that bung, that you can kind of see down there is uh, the gravity feed if you're just going to use the normal um, you know the normal fuel pump and not do in a fuel injection so um, that's really neat so what you would do i wish they had this in the description but they didn't but you would just pull out this uh, nut here and you can get it's a 120 or excuse me one half by 20 uh, unf thread i think if i remember right and what you could do is just put an elbow in there and that could be your return line if you're using an external fuel pump. Um, then you don't have to worry about fuel sloshing around inside and, and aerating itself. So that's really pretty neat. Um, like I said, I wish I had that in the description, but they don't. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, measured up and cut. This metal rod on here is what the fuel pump actually attaches to. Um, you just zip tie it. The white tube here is your pickup line. Um, then, your, of course, your electrical connections. So... I'm gonna get that put together and measured, um, and then we'll go from there. Then I've already got my holes marked where I need to drill holes for this. This actually goes on the inside, like that. And then there's some, excuse me, some bolts that thread into here, and then they'll come up through these holes that I'm gonna drill, and that's what holds the top of the fuel pump slash sender on. So let me get that done. All right, so now we're working on getting the uh, tank together to get the fuel pump installed. Remember I showed you there's that swirl pot in there with the return line. I ran into an issue with this uh, Phytech fuel pump and it's not their fault, it's because of the swirl pot in there. So this is the filter that came on it. It's slightly too long to fit inside that um, housing that's in there. So it sticks out too far that way. So. I started to Google um, different filter socks that'll fit this. This particular one happens to have an 11 millimeter outer diameter inlet. So then I did a Google search for filter socks, um, found this company called Racetronics uh, that makes these various filter socks. They make three of them with an 11 millimeter outer diameter. So there's this one that's on here. Um, it's their 79 millimeter outer um, or diameter filter. This one that I bought, and then this one, which is similar to the one that was on there, but it's slightly smaller, but probably too big that's not gonna work. So the part number for the one I bought um, is there in the middle. It's the 79 millimeter. You can find it on our website, um, easy enough. But I test fit this already. Um, it fits just fine. So we're just gonna go ahead with this one and get this installed today. I'm gonna fill the tank up uh, with a little bit of water first. Make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere before I get all this installed. Um, there's some bungs on the bottom here. So these, I pulled them off. I put some thread sealing on them um, that's rated for gasoline, just to make sure. Um, so like I said, I'll fill it up, make sure nothing's leaking, then we'll get the fuel pump installed. Okay, this is probably the best I'm going to get, but I'm using my endoscope here to look inside the tank, and you can see how 
the filter and the sock fits in there. Um, like I said, it's a snug fit. That's probably the best view I'm gonna get, but she's in there. So I would highly recommend one of these if you're gonna do this job. It's not easy, very tedious. Um, and then there's how the fuel pump's gonna sit on top. Just need to tighten those down and we will be good. So fuel pump is now installed. That was uh, tedious as well. So in order to do it, there's a C-ring that goes in here. These are basically like a captive type of bolt that sits on the bottom of this top piece of the tank. And then you fit this down over top of these as you're holding onto them. I ended up having to tighten down these nuts to really draw the whole thing down. Um, then loosen them and put on your little green, your little green O-rings there. Um, took a while, but I got it. It takes a 3-8 socket, which barely fits into these spaces here. You got to get it just right. Um, but it works, and then I, I hooked it up to my battery with some test leads, put the positive and a negative on. Those are your terminals right there. That's your positive, that's your negative. Um, heard her spin up for a quick second, then shut it down. So I think everything's looking good. So we will start working on getting the fuel line measured. Um, and I still need to run a cable from the engine, from the hood, basically back to the trunk so I can get positive power back there. And then we'll find a place to hook up our negative and figure out how long our fuel line needs to be. And that really finishes it up. Um, the running the fuel line is going to be a little tedious, though, but we'll get into that in the next segment. All right, fuel tank is installed and the fuel line is run. So let me show you how I did this. So there's a decent amount of clearance um, on the top there. That's the fuel sending, or excuse me, the fuel pump. These are the wire connections with the little boots on them. Um, I used a purple wire for the power wire, which I also ran through the um, passenger compartment, and I put a, some quick disconnects on them in case you ever have to pull this tank out or service it or something. That way you can just disconnect this, pull it out. You don't have to actually cut your line or try and get up in here and... Uh, get those off because good luck with that there's very little clearance um so the negative i'm just going to run it over to this back here and hook it up there um here's my negative line i'll just run back there um new sending unit i got a new um whatever piece of rubber to connect the the filler cap to um so here's my line that runs down i, I did put a shut off on here um, in case I ever need it, I don't know that I will, but if you ever have to service it or you're going to park it in a not so good neighborhood or something like that, that's what that's for. Um, I did put some extra sheathing on the line where it runs through the bulkhead here. And then I used this other grommet right here. The original one is back there a little bit and it wouldn't work because the tank basically sits on top of the line in one line upright. Um, there's where my line runs through the passenger compartment i found a good spot where it'll just come out i wrapped in electrical tape just to give it some extra protection so we'll get that hooked up eventually um let me show you how i did everything under the car so there's where the line comes down i got a, a fuel filter and i ran it back up through the t-shirt you, hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, it's not very close to the exhaust. And I don't think it's going to matter as far as heat goes, but it is a consideration. I put more of that protective sheathing here because it may be rubbing against the frame a little bit. I may just zip tie that on there. Um, I use these rubber connectors here. Although I just ended up uh, screwing into the frame. Um, I drilled a hole and then used, those are just rivet nut certs. Um, pretty easy to use, so you just drill the hole, put those in there, they rivet themselves in with a special gun, and then you've got a place to hook up a bolt, so it's simple. Um, now, I may have to put another one here because that's, that's a little bit loose, so I may put another one right back there. Let me show you what the rest of the car looks like. So here's where it runs the rest of the car. 
Um, I was able to get it through these bulkheads and stuff here. Um, it fits through pretty easily. And anywhere it did do that, I still put more of that protective sheathing on there to protect it. Um, there's some more of my connectors. And it runs up here, kind of next to the oil pan. Um, I went behind the brake line, but it's not touching it. So there's no extra stress on that brake line. It's not pushing on it like that or anything. Um, I put two more connectors here. And then it runs up basically through the engine compartment, um, kind of next to where the coolant line comes down. Let me show you that. So the line just comes down, excuse me, comes up right there. So I'll just have to get it cut off, um, get the rest of the connections put on there, and we'll be able to attach this, um, and we should be good. So um, one, I guess, word of caution, if you're gonna run this line the way I did, I ended up just taping it off so I didn't get any debris in there when I fished it through there. The AN fittings themselves won't fit through there. They're too big. So you're gonna, I'm gonna have to figure out a way when I cut this to fit that fitting on there. And it shouldn't be too difficult. I actually did a couple of them by hand without putting it in a vise. Um, I didn't show how to build the AN lines because there's lots of videos on YouTube how to do that. But I did a couple without the line pushing out so it should be easy enough. So once I get that on um, and secured, uh, we'll pretty much be done with this part of it. Next is just hooking up the wiring, which uh, shouldn't be too difficult. So stand by. Thanks for watching. We'll be done here soon. All right, one last thing I wanted to add. Got the fuel pressure gauge hooked up, which connects just like so. Put a little thread sealing on it because uh, those are pipe threads in there. Um, that's the rest of the hookup. I use a 90 degree. It's not really touching on anything. I might zip tie it to this engine mount or engine hoist there, but we'll see. It's not going to rub on anything, so I think it's good. So we'll move on to the wiring. Thanks.